This Congressman Michael Bacall is here to react in moments, but first we'll go to David Spont. He's reporting live from the White House for us. Hi, David. Hi, Sandra. About an hour ago, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, we want to have competition with China, but we don't want that competition to turn into conflict. Hypersonic missiles are different than ballistic missiles in the fact that they travel five times the speed of sound. They're incredibly fast, also incredibly difficult to detect. You can also maneuver uh, these missiles, so countries can maneuver them. That's what makes them uh, much more advanced than the traditional ballistic missiles. As you mentioned, China is denying this report outright and U.S. intelligence officials not commenting on the report. We know that according to the Financial Times, they put out a report on this, Sandra, uh, late Saturday. They're saying that China tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile two months ago in August. The report goes on to say U.S. intelligence officials were completely caught off guard. Chinese officials are brushing it off as a spacecraft test, not a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile. U.S. defense officials are constantly watching what the Chinese are doing. There's always been that natural competition between in both nations when it comes specifically to technology and defense materials. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin oversees meeting officials in the country of Georgia was asked just a few hours ago about the alleged missile. Listen. What I can tell you is that uh, we watch closely China's development of, uh, of uh, armament and, and advanced capabilities uh, and systems that will only increase uh, tensions in the region. Mike Gallagher, congressman from Wisconsin, Republican, said this test should serve as a call to action if we stick to our current complacent course or place our hopes in bankrupt buzzwords like integrated deterrence. We will lose the new Cold War with communist China within a decade. China announced earlier this year that it boosted its defense budget, Sandra, by $208 billion with a B. That's about 7 percent that it boosted. Sandra. All right, David Spunt live at the White House for us. Thank you, John. Thanks. Sandra, let's now bring in Texas Congressman Michael McCall, ranking member on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, he also sits on the House Homeland Security Committee. So, Congressman, how did this one slip by us? Well, it's a great question. Uh, this is the most advanced, most dangerous weapon system that we cannot defend ourselves from. Uh, we knew they had these uh, missiles when they paraded them in Tiananmen Square. Uh, but we, we have not seen them actually use it. So it's a capability uh, that it was able to orbit, you know, the Earth and land about 25 miles away from its target. That's the most disturbing thing of all. I call it a, it's a wake-up call for the United States and our allies. It's also kind of a Sputnik moment, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, where we have to win this global competition against our greatest adversary, uh, communist China. It missed by two dozen miles, but that's, you know, only a first attempt. They can dial that back in pretty quickly. I mean, everybody remembers SpaceX was blowing up boosters on, uh, you know, ships offshore, and now they easily land them exactly back where they, they took off from. So it's just a matter of the learning curve. Does this represent a new Cold War with China? At least it's in the maybe the nascent stages? I, it's like a new space race and a, a, a bit of a Cold War. Uh, we are in competition with them in space. That's why we created the Space Force under the Trump administration is for this very reason. What's, what's particularly frightening about the hypersonics is it's made to avoid detection. Mm -hmm. uh, it flies at a low altitude at five times the speed of sound, and it zigzags. So we currently have no missile defense system to stop it. Now imagine if the hypersonic was put into a submarine off the coast of the United States. Uh, this is uh, what we have been worried about over the years, uh, and to see this kind of capability that they now have, uh, it is putting us, it is heightening the tension. I think he's flexing his muscle, President yeah. Xi, uh, and he's also sensing weakness, John. I mean, I think after Afghanistan and the failure of, of what happened in Afghanistan, they view this president as not projecting strength but weakness, and when they see that, they test, and they are testing this president who I believe is failing in a showing of strength. So, so Congressman, what might this all have to do with Taiwan? Well, this is the uh, most disturbing part, I think, John, is that the technology, uh, in most part, came from the United States that they have used to build these hypersonics. We have software companies in the United States that uh, exported this uh, software to TSMC in Taiwan. Mm -hmm who made the chips that China infiltrated and got the chips from 
uh, TSMC that made that created and helped build these hypersonics. This is why you know we have called for more uh, rigid um, uh, export control uh, laws and action, yeah. so that the United States, for God's sakes, is not sharing. Uh, the very technology mm. that the Chinese military are using to build their most advanced weapons systems. Yeah, well, I, I guess what I was really getting at, though, was does is this part of a, 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 a military umbrella that would make impossible any U.S. response to a Chinese invasion of Taiwan? Right. If you're in Taiwan right now, particularly after, after Afghanistan, uh, the CCP is very emboldened. Uh, so is Russia, you know, Putin with Ukraine. Uh, but Taiwan is very much in their bullseye. It's part of their long-term strategies to take Taiwan back as part of imperial China. Uh, I would be very nervous if I were in Taiwan because they are testing this president. If we show no deterrence in Taiwan, uh, rest assured, communist China will take it over. And they're a, a free democracy in the nation, mm -hmm. uh, in the world. And they, they, they create a lot of these semiconductor chips. Uh, yeah. And uh, we can't allow that to happen. So deterrence is a key, but uh, they, they sense weakness here. Yeah. Well, we'll keep following this. Clearly, this is something that is only going to get worse, not better. Congressman Michael McCall of the great state of Texas, great. thanks for being with us. Appreciate it.